Good evening. First tonight, there's been another twist in Donald Trump and Malcolm Turnbull's political relationship. The US president has again taken to social media, but this time to thank our Prime Minister for, quote, telling the truth about the weekend phone call between the pair. Mr Trump is dismissing the diplomatic dust-up as fake news. Here's Leah Craven. Air Force One delivers the US president to a weekend getaway in Florida. But after only two weeks in office, it's unlikely Donald Trump will get much of a break. The conflicting messages from the newest resident of the Oval Office continue. Yesterday, President Trump boasted about his tough phone calls to foreign leaders, which has become fodder for comedians. I've talked to all the best, most important people, and you're by far the worst. Look. No, you look. Your country's a giant desert full of jumping rats. But then denied reports of a telephone tantrum during a conversation with Malcolm Turnbull. Firing off a tweet, thank you to Prime Minister of Australia for telling the truth about our very civil conversation that fake news media lied about. And the White House is giving the clearest sign yet it will honour the refugee resettlement deal. We're going to honour the commitments that we've made in some way, uh, meaning that we are going to vet these people in accordance with the agreement that happened. But the White House press secretary still hasn't figured out our Prime Minister's name. We have a tremendous amount of respect for the people of Australia, for Prime Minister Trumbull. In another instance of Twitter diplomacy, Donald Trump has stepped up pressure on Iran, tweeting, Iran is playing with fire. They don't appreciate how kind President Obama was to them. Not me. The US will impose sanctions on Iran for testing a ballistic missile. These designations mark yet another stop in our continued effort to aggressively target Iran's ballistic missile program and terrorism-related activities. But in a blow to President Trump's hardline immigration policy, US airlines have been told they can once again board travellers from seven countries who had been barred by an executive order made last week. Leah Craven, 10 Eyewitness News.